We'll watch Yeager, the quarterback for Burnsville for Sox Center. Bestie, their quarterback, and the running back, Schmitz. Uh, those are four of the five of the best players in this ball game, according to the coaches. We see Burnsville, which has been strong on defense all year, and Sox Center, which has a multiplicity of offenses and an exciting, dynamic coach who says, if everything goes right, we ought to come back with the trophy. Okay, the uh, kickoff will be handled by Lauren Bestie, number seven, for Sox Center. The Main Streeters clad, if you're watching in black and white, in the light uniforms. Burnsville, the Braves clad in the dark black and gold uniforms. Deep for Burnsville to receive the kickoffs will be George Harris, Jeff O'Keefe, and Bruce Schoberg. At the 35 36 yard line, Horson, he's number 84. For Burnsville on the carry that. Greg is a 6'1, 170 pound junior. They moved him as a, uh, in as a starting fullback, Joe, in midseason. Jerry Ross had been playing that position. The, the, sweat, the change of Freed Ross to play linebacker. This time it's Holmquist, and he's out across the 45 to the 47 yard line. In on the tackle that time for Sox Center. Tom Merton. Become reality. Well, you saw the amount of time or the amount of uh, room between the end of the football and the end of the yard marker. Third down and about an inch for Burnsville in their first offensive drive of the football game. They're just shy of the 48 yard line. The Braves out. The handoff goes to Orson. And he's down inside the Sox Center 45 yard line at about the 43. With the stop for Sox Center, Dave Welly. Joe, a lot of people shrunk from the idea of night football here on a high school championship basis in November, but uh, I think we ought to report that it's a typical Minnesota November day. Nothing wrong with it. China chilly, about 30 above, a few uh, lingering snowflakes, but good weather. Both ends in tight, and the handoff is to Shandley. Shandley is down inside the 40 yard line to the 39. Pick up of about four on the carry. Bring up second down now and six from the 39-yard line. Burnsville running both ends in tight. The quarterback is Jaeger. Gives to the first man through. And that's Orson again. And we'll take a look at that one again. Okay, we're back to play. Split wide to the right this time as the right end. Of the handoff now goes to the second man through that chandel again. And he's down inside the 30 to the 26 yard line and getting off the bottom of the pile. Again, for Sox Center, Dave Welly. Joe, uh, Sox Center has been very conscious of uh, Harris, uh, the receiver, number 87. They haven't thrown yet. Uh, and they're punishing him inside with Orson and Chandler. Jaeger is under center. And this time the defensive play is made by the Main Streeters is cracking through. It was Larry Hiddle, number 79, back to the 29 yard line. It's a loss on the play. It'll bring up now third down and about nine. Let's call it eight. They have to get just inside the uh, 20 yard line. This time Harris is split to the left. Jaeger gives to the first man through that shandle again. He's inside the 25 to about the 24 yard line. And again, Hiddle in on the stop for Sox Center. Also over to help out that time, Mike Quistor. It'll bring up a foot. This time Harris is split to the left. Jaeger gives to the first man through that shandle again. He's inside the 25 to about the 24 yard line. Been expected to throw the ball by now, and uh, I think here you've got a situation where you can almost expect uh, Jaeger to go. He set all kinds of records for it. He did. This is Orson down near the first down, and they drive him backwards. We're going to have to wait. And Best he is. And the handoff is to Schmitz. And he's got five out to the 26 yard line before he's stacked up there by number 44, Bill Reynolds for Burnsville. We'll get about five on that. We'll have second down and five at the 26 yard line. This is Schmitz again, uh, swinging off left tackle. The, the uh, 
Bob Brophy, the, the Bob Brophy, the coach of the uh, of the uh, Sox center team, calls him the back back at flanker. Right up the middle. This time the mail carried four Sox center by Dave Welly. We'll take a look at that one again. You get a good trap block inside, right there. Number three splits wide to the left. Game, uh... Best he wants to throw, dropping back. The ball is cut. That's Bruce Welling. 42 yard line, 43 yard line of Burnsville. And we'll get a chance to uh, take a look at that one again. This is Bruce Welling, his favorite receiver. Close to the left. That's a difficult pass to throw, Joe. Rolling to the left for a right-handed thrower. Was clear two or three yards, and I think we'll see him throwing to Welly quite often tonight. Okay, it's a first and ten for Sox Center as they've gone to the foot to the. Dusty gives to Schmitz again. Right straight up the middle, Dave Welly. He will have the first down. We have five minutes left to go in the first quarter. No score in the football game. Burnsville against Sox Center. This is Welly. This is an important play. Straight up the middle. No great deception there. They're, uh, they're well drilled. There's any question about it. This is a team, you know, that got out very slowly. Sox Center lost its first game. Rousseau comes split to the right. This is Schmitz. He's hit and dropped at the 26 yard line. He may have gotten forward to the top. The zone is split to the right. Bestie fakes the pass and they've got the man in the backfield at the 30 yard line. The big stop again by Brad Rogge as he came barreling through to stop Welly. Throw being chased. Looking downfield. It is looking for Schmitz. Incomplete and the big defensive play by Paul Holmquist down there for the Braves as he got between Schmidt and Bestie and cut it off. Here, this Holmquist plays the monster linebacker for, Burns, uh, for Burnsville. He's looking for Schmitz. Well, they'll make a liar out of you every time. Well, <laughs> we got a couple left. But uh, he, he broke all the Burnsville passing records. And, uh, and again, in Harris, they have a fellow who caught, Joe, caught three, uh, 23 passes and is uh, recognized by Sox Center uh, from the films as the most dangerous man on the Burnsville team. Second down, six, four yard pickup for Orson on the carry. This is Jaeger with the handoff to Holmquist. And he is out to the 38 yard line. The stop made for Sox Center by number 69, Tom Merton, and he had some help in there by Tim Sch from Tim Schmitz. Third down, two. We have two minutes, 11 seconds to go in the first quarter. Jaeger under center. Gives to Orson. 40, 43 yard line. And he will have the first down. They may play the whole game without throwing a pass. <laughs> ball marked at the 43 yard line. So again, Burnsville able to move the ball and stay on the ground. They have not thrown yet. Burnsville does have something of a weight advantage. I don't think it's crucial, but. They are smart, they have the other line. This is Orson, 45, 46 yard line. He's stacked up there by Schmitz and also over to help out Brisson. Take another look at it. There's good gang, gang tackling in there uh, by Stock. They're, they're well disciplined. The ball resting 46 yard line. Both ends in tight. Great T backfield. Orson finished football game. Both ends again in tight straight T backfield. Jaeger under center. Orson again the ball carrier. 45 and he's hauled down right there. Gary Hiddle in on the stop for Sox center. And he had Go ahead. Help from uh, Larry Hiddle. Gary and Larry both in. Go ahead. He's now carried the ball nine times in the, in the first half for 42 yards. This kid was not a regular he made an uh, outstanding showing in a junior varsity game in mid-September they moved him up from end to fullback and you see the result straight T again Jaeger wants to throw this time looking for Harris long downfield it is cut going to the five-yard line George Harris 
Beautiful catch. Harris. Well, they waited a while for that one, but they delivered it. We'll see it again. This is George Harris on a straight fly downfield. He's covered. They've got two men on him. Somehow he catches the ball. Double team, front and back. Comes up with it. He's been doing it all year. And this is the reason they call him the best there is on the Burnsville team. Bestie and Quistorf were the defenders on the play. So Burnsville with the first scoring opportunity of the game. There's a timeout on the field. No, wait a minute. There is not. Evidently, they thought the quarter was over, but the scoreboard clock still shows 16 seconds left. Evidently, uh, <laughs> the gun was fired down in the field by mistake. So there's still 16 seconds to go in the first quarter. The ball at the five. First and goal from that point for the Burnsville Braves as they have the first scoring opportunity on that long bomb by Yeager, his first pass of the football game. Orson, touchdown Burnsville. He's run that play at least four or five times. There's a timeout on the field to score. Burnsville six. And well, wait a minute. Let's uh, let's pause for just a second. seven to nothing. And here's a look at that extra point. Right through the uprights. It's Jerry Ross plays linebacker, also fullback. They went uh, 71 yards, Joe, in uh, eight plays. The big one, 40-yard pass to Harris. Orson gaining most of the yardage on the ground. Harris with the kick to Schmitz at the 18-yard line. 25, 30, 35, 36-yard line, and he's hauled down there. The tackle made for Burnsville by John Flatgraff. So Sox center goes back to the offense, and they were able to move the ball well the first time. Well, uh, Jim, you commented that Burnsville liked to throw, had not, and they were extremely successful, 40 yards worth well, on their first a, attempt. It was like a ticking bomb with uh, Harris stuck out there. And, of course, on that touchdown play, you want to credit Mitch Rogie, Mark Wallace, and George Harris for the fine blocking. That's the, the That's the end of the first quarter. The score, Burnsville 7, Sox center nothing. He goes under center, out of the eye this time. Dave Welly, the ball carrier, gets out across the 40 to the 41 and a half yard line. We'll bring up second down. Well, he's run five. Well, he's run well for him, Joe. They've used him chiefly as a blocker during the season. Schmitz is a big uh, ground gainer. Let's set the rest of that front four. 72 is Brad Rogie, and number 62 is Bruce uh, Skindelin. Bruce Skindelin. That's the front four for Burnsville right now. Bestie wants to throw. At the 45-yard line, he overthrows the intended receiver, Bruce Welly. You uh, may have noticed the man out there with him, Joe. George Harris. He just caught that long pass from Burnsville. He's there. An outstanding safety back. Has intercepted six passes this year. 11-24 to go in the first half. Burnsville with a 7-0 lead. Third down five for Sox Center. Again out of the eye. Brissona split to the left. Schmidt right up the middle. Ankle tackle at the 45-yard line by Reynolds for Burnsville. And Ron, this young man plays a lot of defense for the Braves. He made several good plays early in the ball game. He looks quite uh, active out there. He was covering on a pass. He is Reynolds. Seen him run a blitz. Just a matter of time, I think, Ron, until uh, Schmitz does get loose, though. It's pretty hard to contain a fellow like that for the whole game. Lauren, uh, let's see, Schmitz is back to do the punting. He'll kick from about his own 35 yard line. Just about Nearly blocked. Blocked. And back to cover the punt for Burnsville, a young man by the name of Harris. And I was noticing, Jim, when you mentioned that earlier, that uh, this guy plays about six or seven positions for, for Burnsville. Oh, he really does, and, uh, and all of them uh, uniformly well. He's uh, he's carried one. I think he went 99 yards for one touchdown during the season, Joe. He uh, he holds the school records for interceptions, for pass receptions, for kickoff runbacks, and for uh, leaning out the baskets, I suppose, and study. First and ten for the Braves. They ball at their own 19-yard line, so starting deep in their own territory. Now they got the full Jaeger under center. Gives to the first man through. That's Orson. And he's to the 21-yard line before they get 
Ron, you commented that uh, Sox Center uses the Notre Dame defense, and teams like to attack that at the tackle. Why? Well, you're playing a corner linebacker head up on the tight end, and if the tight end can block on him, you've got a, quite a gap in there. I noticed in this last play now, Sox Center jumped into an Oklahoma, an odd set man nose guard there on the center. Straight T. Good deception and straight over left guard. Maybe that'll be, jump back into the Or Burnsville goes Paul Holmquist. Notre Dame's tougher inside, I think. <laughs> we do it again. That's a quick trap, and uh, they've got the guys to run it. They work on it uh, and pride themselves. As a matter of fact, uh, Rasek, Scott, uh, Scott Rasek, Joe, is considered the best uh, trap blocker on the Burnsville team. Jaeger does a good job of faking in that backfield, too. Again, both ends in tight. This is Orson, 35 yard line. Upending them there, Four Sox center, Joe Brisson, and Schmitz. And we vowed we're not going to be technical on this, right? <laughs> we'll, let, we'll let Raveling handle it technically. <laughs> we have 9.25 to go in the half. Second down, six. Four Sox center, the ball at the, or Fort Burnsville, rather, the ball at their own 35 yard line. Again, both ends tight, straight T formation. Trying to come wide with Shandel. And the big stop made for Sox Center by Larry Hiddle. Number 79 as he played it well. Penalty marker down, and we'll wait and see what this is all about. They're talking to Sox Center. That's Lauren Bestie. Team. Parson gets away from Schmitz. 26 yard line, and he's hauled down there. And another penalty marker goes down. The tackle made for Sox Center is Randy Simmer. So while we get the call on this one, we'll uh, remind you there's a timeout on the field. Yard line, finally catching up with him for Sox Center, Larry Hiddle again. He was being chased back there by two or three guys. They faked the reverse to Harris here, of course. They're continually conscious of Harris, but it didn't fool him. They, they stormed the three people on him. And uh, it's a losing battle right here. Gary Hiddle was also in there, and so was uh, Dave Neal. It was a fake deep reverse. I think we can remember that play, Joe. They'll come back with it and get to Harris. Harris to punt from his own five. Left-footed kicker. Good kick. 45. Besty. 50. 45. And hit and drop at the 42-yard line. Randy Zupan. Tackle by Zupan. Here's a look at it again. Watch the moves best he puts on here. He's a fine all-around player, Joe. He was the uh, he was the outstanding, but the outstanding player in the West Central Conference. 7:41 to go in the first half. Sox Center with good field position. The ball at the 44-yard line of Burnsville. It's in Brisson, wide to the left. Welly. Virtually no gain on the play. Holmquist played that very well. Curious to see if he was under the replay because the quarterback came out there with the, with the fake and uh, had a lot of running room had he had the ball. One thing uh, Sox Center says it doesn't have, Joe, is, is patience. They say they don't like to fool around with that four yards in a cloud of dust. They go for broke, they say, and uh, all the way. High formation. This is Bestie on the keep. Gets away from Holmquist and rolls down to the 43-yard line. They're running out of that eye quite a bit. And uh, best he uses, Ron, just an almost a variation of the old Statue of Liberty play, the way he holds that ball up in the air. I haven't seen that for years. It's a variation of the draw. It's, a, it's an interesting wrinkle. I think one of the things the viewers might be surprised about is that the... Uh, some of the high schools in this tournament, in this playoff, are going to be using more varied offenses than you'll see on the, on the professional team. Third and eight, Brisson split to the left. Right up the middle. This is Schmidt. Schmidt Perry. Gets down to the 37-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down. And about four. A quick trap, and uh, they missed the first down by something like three yards. They're going to go for it. And on the 37, Bruce Welly split to the left. Schmitz, mm. he will have the first down at the 32-yard line. A counter play. 
Holmquist. There it is, and it opened up for him. This is the first time they've used that play, I think, on this. And he's the fellow, Joe, that they have to shake loose. Holmquist with the stop for Burnsville. So Sox Center driving now. They trail in the football game, 7 to nothing. We have 6.09 to go in the first half. Crisone comes split to the left, again operating out of the eye. Almost a bobble by Schmitz. I think he got it back. It looked like he ever had possession of the football. He did recover the uh, fumble. Actually did not ever lose full possession of it. The stop made by Greg Jorgensen for Burnsville, who's number 81. Ball at the 31-yard line will bring up second down nine. Jim, you mentioned time bomb in regard to Burnsville. I have to feel the same way about his halfback from Sox Center. Just, you just have the feeling he's going to break one sometime. Schmitz, yes. Now they use the motion for the first time. Besty to Schmitz for the 27-yard line. Mike Quistorf was in on offense. He was the man in motion in number 28. Mike is their messenger boy, Joe. When he comes in, you can uh, you can credit or debit whatever that happens to the coach. <laughs> Third down, five. Ball at the 27-yard line. Cresson comes to the left. This time, Welly is in motion. Best he keeps. 25, 24, and he's hauled down there. In on the stop for Burnsville that time. Holmquist, and also coming across to help out was Jerry Ross. Here's the man in motion series, and it doesn't, uh, and it doesn't seem to be rattling Burnsville. They're handling it uh, pretty well, but I think the significant thing here is that Sock is is opening up. They have all kinds of offenses, and they they're rather indomitable young high school uh, coach, 26 year old kid, doesn't believe his team can be beaten. Ball at the 24 yard line, fourth down and two. High backfield, Brisson's put to the right this time. Besty, Schmitz. And they stop. Hit, but and he... then drives forward with second effort. He was hit back at the 24-yard line by Jerry Ross and then moved down near the 21. He's going to be close to that first down. He may have it. He does. No, wait. They're going to measure for it. Yard line. Right here. Again out of the eye. Besty's the quarterback. Schmitz, 20. 15-yard line. Tackle made there for Burnsville by Paul Holmquist. About a six-yard pickup on the carry. Bring up second down. There he is, and uh, if it were daylight, I suppose you'd They're moving the backfield, Joe. He's, got, uh, he's the front man in the eye on, these, uh, on the plays when he's uh, cutting up the middle, and he's now run up 47 yards. Persona is split to the right. Best he wants to throw, being rushed. Jorgensen's after him. He looks loose. It is caught, and a touchdown Sox Center. The ball deflected by one of the Burnsville defenders and picked up down there for Sox Center I hope by Schmitz. See that one again. We'll see it again. I think you'll see, Joe, that uh, Harris, the, the outstanding receiver for Burnsville, tipped that ball, practically had it intercepted. I'm sure it was Harris. And it fell, and was it, it was Schmitz who caught here, the ball. Here it is. We'll get a chance to look at it again. Watch for 87. I think it was uh, 87. Almost intercepted uh, Harris. There he is. It had the ball. Lauren Besty with the extra point attempt. It is good. Is good. So we've got a tie football game on our hands. There's a timeout on the field to score Burnsville 7, Sox Center 7. Jeff O'Keefe. The 33. 32 is where they mark his forward progress. Hittle in on the stop for Sox Center. So it's a tie ball game, and we have a few snowflakes coming down here at Metropolitan Stadium. Wouldn't feel comfortable without them. I feel very comfortable with them because I'm behind glass. That's, <laughs> that's I don't better, know how the players. That's better than behind bars. <laughs> Which has been suggested all. <laughs> Jaeger goes under center. This is Jaeger. He wants to throw. Overthrows Orson at about the 45-yard line. So Burnsville goes to the air for the second time. The only other attempt that uh, Jaeger had thrown was the 40-yard completion to Harris. Second down, 10. Ball still at the 32. I'm sure on that touchdown uh, pass, Joe, that uh, George Harris will be mumbling. He, he did seem to have the ball. Uh, it may have uh, it may have been deflected. But it, it was nearly an intercept. Jaeger is the quarterback. He wants to throw again over the middle. He's got Harris. 45, 50, 40, 30. Best.
Nasty can't get him. We'll check. 20 yard line. Brisson for the 32, and he's stacked up there by a host of black jerseys, led by number 25, Jeff O'Keefe. Ron, you were saying at halftime that uh, the coaching just gets better and better in Minnesota, and uh, this game is just an indication of it. I've seen so many excellent plays by individuals, things that coaches work hard at. I'm particularly impressed by a couple of plays by the defensive ends. They technically just, just perfect. Mesty to Schmitz. 20, 35, 40 yard line, 42 yard line before he's run out of bounds. Coming across to make the stop on him that time for Burnsville, Mark Yeager. You'll see Schmitz shake a tackle here by the very sure tackler, Holmquist, who is the monster linebacker right there. Visual time for measurement. They have a first and ten up on the boards, and that's uh, from the last play. Schmitz got almost ten yards, and as Jim pointed out, he was almost nailed in the backfield. Both ends in tight as best he goes under quarter. Schmitz. 50 yard line, 48 yard line of Burnsville before he stacked up. Most dangerous play in football. Short yardage and you get crammed up there on defense and somebody bustling through, it can go a long way. And there's a and good they look can at tack it again. Chandler on this one because he, he made the tackle and Schmitz was getting momentum and he may have broken it all the way. More than enough for the first down. First and 10 for Sox Center in Burnsville territory at the 48 yard line. Bestie keeps the football. Gets a block from Schmitz. Downfield, he's got Brisson at the 29-yard line. He slips and falls back at the 31 as he tried to cut back in reverse directions. You're going to see Bestie reacting very coolly on this. They force the play. He swings out further to the right, sees the, sees the opening, throws it, but I think we may have a penalty we on do, this. Jim. I think we've got an ineligible receiver downfield. They're moving the markers back. And here it is again. All right. They've moved the yard markers back now. There will be a penalty coming up. They're trying to find out where the ball was. And this, of course, is uh, one of those situations. <laughs> They're one, one pulling one way and one pulling the other. The ball was at the 48-yard line. And uh, they've got to put those... Uh, it's tough when the uh, chain gang can't get along. Well, they're going the wrong direction. You see, the guy on the left has got to got to move it down there to the, where the one is. Now he's got to move it down for. There we go. <laughs> now we're. Well, it's a tough situation when you need an attorney to run the chain. Gang. Well, you know, we've had this uh, play pop up a couple of times, and we've mentioned professional football, but it's popped up there. So to have it happen in high school, of course, uh, is an indication that it happens even further down the line. They the probably long walk, of course, is 15 yards worth, so it'll be first and 25 now with the ball at the Sox Center 37 yard line. Bestie to his left. Down he goes. I think we had a broken play. Greg Jorgensen was the man that made the play there, number 81. Do I have a feeling that uh, that play didn't work the way it was uh, designed on the board? It looked like he turned around and wanted to hand to somebody, but there was nobody there. You can feel awfully lonely when that happens. Did manage to pick up a yard on the play. Second down, 24. We'll see whether Bestie goes airborne here. Brisson comes split to the right. Bestie goes under center. Pitches wide to Schmitz. Gets away from Holmquist, but he can't get away from the second man through Reynolds. And he's hauled down at the 37. May have lost about a yard on the play. Reynolds has made at least three or four fine open field tackles. 10 04 to go, third quarter. Loss of a yard, third and 25. Four Sox center. The play has come in from the bench. We'll see what Coach Bob Brophy has called. That penalty really hurt him. They were rolling. Rousson is split to the left. Bestie fakes the handoff. Now he gives to Schmitz. He wants to throw it. But for Brisson, it is intercepted and dropped at the 44-yard line for Burnsville. Jaeger made the play. You'll see him here almost intercepting the ball. The ball's underthrown right there. 
Mark Yeager, of course, was the quarterback on offense. So with fourth and long yardage, we'll get a chance to look at that again. The ball is floats up, and Yeager almost got under it. Schmitz is back to do the punting at his own 25-yard line. They had the rush on. Takes a suck center roll down to the 20-yard line. Harris picks it up there. 25-yard line, and down he goes. Four sock center, number 53, Tom Barhorst, was the first man to get to him. We have 9.25 to go in the third quarter. Zorson. And he'll get about five. Schmitz made the stop for Burnsville. Ron, you're a coach. You have a seven-point lead. You uh, stay on the ground now. I think most of us would intend to run our best stuff, whether it's ground or air. This is Shamble. To the 37-yard line. And that will be enough for a first down. So Burnsville moving the ball, but Sox Center was moving the ball, and that penalty really hurt him, Jim. Hey, Burnsville is strong in the center of the line. They've got a big center, Mike Long, and he uh, a good blocker. Orson to the 40-yard line. He's tripped up there by Tom Merton for Sox Center. He'll get three, second down and seven. Second and seven. Harris is split to the right. Holmquist is in the slot. Shandle. And there's a penalty marker down. So while we get that, we'll take this opportunity to pause. There's a timeout on the field to score Burnsville 14, Sox Center 7. Presenting Holiday Village's new Christmas gift shopping concept, Santa's hometown. We're Santa. Burnsville. Down 12. Shandle. Gets away from one man, 40-yard line, and he stopped there. Tackle made for Sox Center by Mike Quistor. Ron, you said that the Sox Center has adjusted that defense. Well, they, they brought their corner backers outside and put their bigger kids in on the tight end. So they don't have the linebacker nose up on the tight end anymore. Holmquist is in motion. This is Jaeger being chased. Still looking. Throws for Harris off his fingertips at the 50-yard line. Bestie defending on the play. He showed a lot of poise back there, Jim. Yes, he was being pursued. We'll see number 79, Larry Hiddle, pursuing on this. Almost caught him. And he was looking for Harris, but Bestie covered the play well. Fourth down and seven. Harris back to punt. Will kick from about the 30. Bestie back as a single receiver. Gets it off. He'll let it roll, and it takes a Burnsville roll and goes out of bounds at the 21-yard line. So Sox Center will move back to the offense. With 7.06 to go in the third quarter, 14-7, Burnsville up by a touchdown. Schmitz and Welly are the running backs. Mix up in the backfield. And Bestie is down by Jorgensen and Glocky. Back at the 26, or excuse me, the 16-yard line. Loss of five on the play. You, at this stage, uh, I would think you'd look for uh, Sox Center to try to get the ball on a uh, swing pass uh, of some kind to Schmitz, who is their breakaway runner. Brisson splits right again. Schmitz fumbles, but the whistle had blown the ball dead at the 18-yard line. Ball carrier. Third and 13. By Jim Sox Center started out the second half like they were really going to come storming back, but they've had their troubles ever since that, that penalty. penalty killed that and they seem to take something out of them. And, and Burnsville is uh, playing what they would call a very legitimate defense at this point. Brizona split right. He's over to cover him. Best he wants to throw. Being rushed on the screen. He's got Welly. 22-yard line, and he's hauled down there again by Glocky. 
He played that well, Ron. He's I think it was, with the play. I think it was Schmitz, and that was what we had expected him to do, to try to get the ball to Schmitz out on the screen or a slip screen, and there he is. But it was handled very well by Glocky, who was a man-to-man -man with him. We'll take another look at it. This is Bestie moving out, faking to the left, looking for Schmitz. Glocky's with him all the way. Harris and Shandle back deep. This is Harris at the 48. 50, gets a block. 45. Schmitz has him and drags him out of bounds at the 30-yard line from behind. I think you'll see on this punt, Joe, Jeff O'Keefe deliver a line block to get Schmitz loose down to the 30. There's Schmitz, and there's the block by O'Keefe. And it, it meant another 15 yards, 20 yards with the kind of running Harris can do. So Burnsville with excellent field position. The ball at the Sox center 30. Full house backfield, both ends in tight. Orson hit and roll down as he reached the 30 yard Orson line. A slipping through was Randy Simmer, number 57. Tackle by Simmer. There's a new. No gain on the play. Well, give him a yard. Second down and nine. Ball at the 29. Again, that straight tee backfield with the ends in tight. Orson. 26 yard line. By Yeager. Does very well. I, he held a couple of players right on the line with that fake. Chip Cox made the tackle for Sox Center. That'll bring up third down now. And let's call it six, third and six. The ball outside the 25. Probable passing situation. We'll see what they do with it. They split two receivers. Holmes to the left, Harris to the right. Jaeger gives to the first man through Orson right over the 20-yard line down to the 18 before Schmitz gets him with help from Quistor. Right, you can put a large star behind Jaeger, the quarterback, on this. Another beautiful job of taking in the backfield and with the... Uh, Trap blocking of Scott Rasek. They open up a big hole for the first down. First and 10 for Burnsville. We have 4.03 to go, third quarter of play. The Braves driving. Orson again. 15, 14 yard line. They wrap him up there. Welly. And Brisson in on the stop. That's Dave Welly. There are two Wellies. Bruce Welly also plays for Sox Center. And I guess we should point out that there are two Shandles playing for Burnsville. Bob Shandle, number 30, and Jim Shandle, number 31. So some brother combinations in the game. Again, that's great T. Shandle, touchdown Burnsville. A huge hole. Jim Shandle. That looked like the play they scored on earlier. Well, here it is again. Here's Mike Wong. Watch the center. He knocks the... Right guard out of the play completely. A big block by Mike Wong. Also Mark Wallace, Scott Rasick, the center of the line. I think the critical block there by the big center. We'll see it again. And they had some misdirection on that, which deceived part of the secondary. Extra so point attempt by Jaeger is no good off to the left. There's a timeout on the field to score. Burnsville 20. Sock Center, seven. Think happy today. Why think about yesterday? They lead in the ball game, 20 to seven. Smith can't find the handle and falls on top of the football. At the 27 yard line. So Sock Center will have the ball first and 10. At their own 27-yard line. Kick off again, and uh, Schmitz has trouble handling the ball here. Almost loses it, as a matter of fact, as the uh, Burnsville pursuit comes down the field. Joe, Ar like to, go ahead, Jim. I'm sorry. Orson now has 84 yards and 16 carries, leading Brown Gainer on the field. Brisson goes split to the left, and they move Bruce Welly to the right. Sox Center has to get back in the ball game here. They're down now. 20 to 7, a beautiful defensive play by Reynolds. 
as he hits Dave Welly for about a yard loss back at the 26 yard line. If this was pro ball that's the boy you'd have to pick as the outstanding defensive player of the game. Yes, uh, he's made that tackle uh, three times in this game and they don't fool him much coming on that side. 234 to go third quarter second down 11. Persona split to the left. Bestie being rushed. There's a screen to Schmitz. 25 and he's upended there. Holmquist along with Jerry Ross. Yeah, we'll look at it again. You have to feel the home has some satisfaction. He's missed a couple open field tackles, but he made no mistake on this one. Right there. Oh. Third down. Ten. I'd like to welcome the folks in the Alexandria area, KCMT TV, carrying the game tonight. And I know folks out there would uh, like the score to be a little different, but we still got a little over a quarter to go. Christorf in motion. The handoff goes to Schmidt straight ahead, and there's no hole there. Now bear in mind, Joe, that uh, these kids from Sox Center trailed Hibbing, which is rated fourth in the state, by 25 to seven with something like six minutes remaining, and won the game. Fourth down eight in the punting situation as Harris and Jim Shandle drop back in the deep receiving spots for Burnsville. Schmitz will kick from about the 20. Low snap. Gets it away. Harris, 40 yard line. To the 49 before he's hit. He was hit back at the 43 initially. And simply saw a little opening and ran to it. And I guess, Ron, you'd have to call that going to daylight. Because there wasn't a heck of a lot of it there. No, that's for sure. As a matter of fact, at uh, 730, there isn't much anywhere. But uh, running to nightfall. Burnsville has yeah, a beautiful yeah. field position throughout this half. And they've got it again. First and 10 at their own 49. They can't afford to give him another touchdown. Chandler's in the slot. Jaeger wants to throw. He's got plenty of time. Downfield for Harris. He has it. 23. 15, 14 before he's hauled down by Pesty. And he came back to get that ball. And stepped in front of the defender beautifully. Look yes, at it. Again. That was Pesty in the ball. Drawn, uh, it was one of those plays where you don't want to credit too much to the offense because the play was well covered. But the fine athletic instincts of the kid uh, Harris made it. First down the 14 yard line. He's true everything. Orson is a penalty. Penalty marker down. Orson to the five yard line. He'll be near first down territory, but there's a penalty marker down. Illegal procedure on the part of Burnsville is the preliminary indication. And you can pretty well bet that Sox Center will take it. In the meantime, the scoreboard clock indicates that the quarter has ended. But we'll wait for the officials here. It would be what it'd be third down and very close to uh, first down yardage, maybe even a first down if they didn't take it. Holmquist in the slot. Jaeger wants to throw right over the middle, off the fingertips of Holmes. It goes incomplete. Defending on the play for Sox center, Joe Brisson. Jaeger's pass intended for Holmes. It's one of the few times they've thrown to Holmes in the game. The yeah, he lined receiver up. has been uh, Harris. Yes, he lined up uh, tight end on the left side. He was wide open. This time, both ends tight in full house backfield. Straight back is Jaeger. For Harris, he's got it. Touchdown, Burnsville. He was all alone. We'll look at it again. We'll look for Harris getting open in the right corner. Bestie is covering him, but he gets two strides behind him. The pass is thrown perfectly into the corner. Touchdown. And you'll note he had both feet in the end zone when he had possession of the football. He never doubted it. We'll have the extra point attempt now by Jerry Ross. Mark Yeager will hold. Fumbles it. The stop by Bestie. So the extra point attempt is no good. And Burnsville has a 26 to 7 lead. 
We'll take another look at that uh, touchdown play here. It was wide open. This time both ends tight in full house backfield. Straight back is Jaeger. For Harris, he's got it. Touchdown Burnsville, he was all alone. Jim, did you say he wasn't until midway through the season? Oh, no, no, the, uh, the fullback, Greg Orson, was moved uh, from end to fullback halfway through. You have a feeling Harris started playing in the cradle. <laughs> I mean, catching passes in the cradle. Schmitz, Brisson, and Welly are deep for Sox Center. Harris with the kickoff. Schmitz at the 15, 25. Gets around the corner. Hit and dropped as he reaches the 37-yard line. Jeff O'Keefe was the man that got him. Look at it again. Returns to kick off to the 37-yard line. Pretty solid now hit right there on the sidelines. Holmes and Harris on the tackle. Boom. Yeah. So Sox Center will have to pull out the stops now, but as uh, Jim mentioned a while ago, they were down badly to Hibbing and came back and won. How much this identical score? Welly straight ahead. But of course, Hibbing didn't have uh, George Harris or Greg Orson. And we've talked a lot about Orson and uh, Harris, but this young man, Jaeger, does a great job in that backfield with those hands of his. Beautiful the, deception. Uh, Get you going the wrong way. Persona split left in the slot. High backfield. Schmitz couldn't get by that last man. 41 yard line. Tackle made for Burnsville by Brad Rogie. Third down and six. I guess I'd have to wager a cookie. They're going to throw the ball. 10.45 to go in the ball game. Bestie goes under center. Persona's put right this time. There goes, goes your the cookie. cookie. Schmidt is, Schmitz is down at the 43-yard line. And Sox Center will probably have to give up the football here as they have the ball at their own 40. Well, they're giving forward progress to the 44-yard line. They'll bring up fourth down and still three, and they send the punting unit on the field. Would you believe a chocolate eclair? Schmitz does the punting, but remember, he is a fine runner. Harris and Shandell are back deep. Another good kick by Schmitz. Harris at the 20. Whole host of white jerseys, and he can't get by. Tripping him up for Sox Center was Tom Barhorst. He got him by the ankle at the 27-yard line. There are just too many of them. I had about five to one, which, in the case of Harris, about the right odds you'd get. Once more, good coverage here. Good gang tackle. First and ten, Burnsville at their own 27. Straight T backfield. Orson. Well, one or 31. One or two first downs here, Joe, and you'd almost have to feel that would kind of condemn uh, Sox Center at this time. Tackle made by Randy Simmer that time. Ball at the 31, four yard pickup, second down and six. One reason the score is uh, 26 to seven, Joe, is that Sox Center's made only one first down in this half. This is Holmquist, and he is ankle tackled at the 33 yard line. And the tackle that time for the Main Streeters by Dave Neal. Pick up of two, it'll bring up third down and four. And of course, as uh, Jim mentioned, they would like to pick up a first down here to kill some of that clock. I'm sure they're aware of the fact that Sox Center came back a week ago against Hibbing. Jaeger's gonna throw on third down. Down the middle, he's going for Harris, he's behind the defender. 20 yard line, they're not gonna get him. The final block. Laid down there for Ryan Paris. Burnsville by Ryan Paris. And here, look at it again, and uh, this is a beautiful call. Third down and six. He throws the ball deep. He had two receivers out. A crushing block by Ryan Paris. 
and in he goes for his what third touchdown of the evening by Harris. One more time. Oh, he's a great athlete. Extra point attempt by Ross is again no good. There's a timeout on the field to score. Burnsville 32, Sox Center 7. Short kick at the 20. Schmitz. 25. Great individual effort by yes. Tim Schmitz. Yes, it was. He slipped a tackle by Jeff O'Keefe back on the 20 yard line. <laughs> So I have the ball, and we'll take a look at that uh, again. Here's Jeff O'Keefe, who had him dead to rights on the 25. He broke loose, came upfield for 15 more. Look at him wait. Really waited for a blocker. First and 10 for the Main Streeters. The ball at their 36. Bestie will throw. He's got time. Throwing long downfield. It is caught by Schmidt, and he drops the ball. Gets him, he gets the whistle her. blew the ball dead, so it is a completed forward pass. And he, hit, he was hit the ball almost instantaneously, but had the that possession right there, long enough. He was really mauled by Harris. One more time, watch Harris hit him just as he catches the ball. This is the Harris, of course, right there. He dropped it, but he ruled he had possession long enough. And Schmitz was shaken up on the play. He was held back to the huddle by his teammates, but he's staying in there. As they huddle back near the 50-yard line. So Sox Center connects on the long bomb. Their first aerial connection for any yardage tonight. Bestie has two men split out. He throws just as he's hit. Complete it. The other line. Rasson, Joe Rasson. You'll see Greg Jorgensen put great on Bestie here, but he throws the ball deep and he gets behind Jaeger, the defensive back, five yards back of Jaeger and goes in for the touchdown. So Sox Center is going to time. Here comes Jorgensen right there. He throws the ball just ahead of the pass, pass rush, five yards back of the defensive back touchdown. And it appears that Sox Center may go for the two-pointer. Now remember, Burnsville has missed some conversions. Bestie. Fakes the handoff. And he won't make it as Jaeger comes through and rolls him down at the four yard line. Puts the full foot into it. This is Harris. 20 yard line, and he has hit and dropped as he crosses the 25. And is coming through there to make the stop. Four socks. That was Larry Hittle, I think. Larry Hittle, right. He's played an outstanding yes, defensive has. game for the Main Streeters. Yes, he has. We yeah. talk so much about the outstanding Burnsville backs and, of course, ends, but I think this is the stage of the ball game. Now you want to take a look at the middle of that line because they they want to hold on to the football now. Watch that center in the two guards. Mike They're Long is Mike Long is a center, six foot four. Orson spins away at the 31, and he moves all the way out to the 38-yard line before they get him. Bruce Welly had him back at the 31, but couldn't hang on to him. Orson is 6'1", goes 170 pounds. Watch Rogie, number 77, delivers a block here. It's out of range of the camera, but he's played an extremely fine football game. Jaeger fooled me on that one. Holmquist is the ball carrier. I started to follow Jaeger around. Not the 39 yard line. That'll bring up second down and eight. 6.49 to go in the football game. Burnsville leading 32 13. Little house backfield again. Horson gets about a yard or two at the 41 he's brought down. And Randy Simmer. Is the man on the bottom of the pile for Sox Center. Now they Outside of the, the pass plays, Jim, uh, Sox Center has been very tough against the run in the second half. Yes, they have. And of course, in this uh, 
Burnsville has reversed completely. Remember, in the first quarter, they did nothing uh, in the air except the one long pass to Harris. In the second half, they've been going for the big play and hitting it. Third and six. He passed on this last time. He gives to Orson. First down at the 48 yard line of Sock Center as he first threw a big hole. Picked up the first down for Burnsville. Tackle by Smith. Schmitz with the stop. Ron, they opened it up that time. Doing we'll take, a look, job. take another look at it here. There's Orson on the trap, and I think they were aware of the possibility of the pass there. They've been throwing the ball on third and long, even when uh, well ahead. First and ten at the 48 of Sock Center. Burnsville moving on the ground right now. This is Shandle to the 42, and he is tripped up there by Quistorf. Once more, Rasick, Wong, and Wallace responsible there for the big game. Seven yard pickup. Are they trapping in their run or are they just blowing them out? Well, the Notre Dame set, you have the tackles over the offensive guards and the linebackers, and they're doing a great deal of stunning. The Burnsville boys are doing it. Just a picking it up. Job yeah. of picking it up. Right. Orson. 30 yard line down to the 27 and Festy has to get him there. They're opening big holes. In the yes, this is pretty well killing Sox Center. What they didn't need was a long time consuming drive by Burnsville and that's what they're getting. 513 left to go in the football game. Burnsville with the lead. That's uh, that's Orson uh, now gone over 130 yards Joe in, in 21 carries. He has carried the ball with run of the time on the ground. Holmquist, and not too much of a hole that time as they stack it up. Chip Cox was the man that met him at the 26 yard line. And he's a little upset with himself. Joe, I think I'll hustle down to the field to see what the boys are going to say after the game, and uh, we'll be seeing you in a few minutes. All right? Okay. Jim will be down on the field for the awards presentation and he'll try to get a hold of the uh, winning coach after the game. Second down 10. Orson again. 20 yard line and he's stacked up there by Bruce Welly. And also in to help out Randy Simmer again. Clock continues to run down to the 414 mark. And Ron, if you're a coach and you're winning 32 to 13, you've got almost the ideal situation going for you here. Anything goes. Third and four. Orson touchdown Greensboro. And again, that beautiful ball handling in the backfield by Jaeger. We'll get to look at it again. Ron, what do they do here? Uh, that's fine blocking. Very fine blocking. And some fine running by Orson. He came into this game as the leading ball carrier, and he certainly has done nothing to uh, belay that particular belief. He's racked it up all over. And we'll have the two point try here. Play they've used many times this evening. Shandle for two. So there's a timeout on the field. The score, Burnsville 40, Sox Center 13. 40-13. This is Schmitz at the 13. 20. 25. Shoots the gap at the 30 and gets out to the 34-yard line, where Jaeger and Jorgensen converge on him. And Sox Center will have the ball first and 10 at their own 34. Here it is again. Ronnie tried to hit that uh, slot and tried to split the defense, but uh, they closed it up after he got by the first man. They're re reacting very well. Of course, once things start going your way, playing loose, you play so much better. Catch up football is the worst kind of football in the world. Bestie will throw. No, he will not. Scrambling well at the 35, 40 out of bounds at the 43 yard line. Coming over to knock him out was Marty Hansen, who's come in the game now for Burnsville. He turned that into a pretty fair game. Burnsville right now sending substitutions on the field. As Coach Dick Hansen, with that commanding lead, gets a chance to play some of the fellows that uh, 
contribute so much to a football team but don't get a chance to see a lot of action during the year. So Burnsville right now on the edge of the bestie will try to throw again. He unloads over the middle and he's got Welly. 45 down to the 35 down to the 30 yard line before he spilled. Bruce Schulberg came over to uh, make the stop on him. He didn't have much time to get rid of it. Well, he coming out of the backfield. Here it is again. What do they do? Just uh, drop him out over the line. Well, they drag one man deep and bring him out behind. First down for Sox Center at the Burnsville 30 yard line. Bestie will try to throw again. Throwing long. He's got a receiver down at the 10 yard line and hit and drop is Brisson as he gets down to the two. We'll get a chance to look at that one again. Here's Bestie. And he had Brisson who had the defender beat. Ryan Paris was the man back defending on the pass and there you see it down to the two. Joe this is the great thing about high school athletics I think these kids are out of the game no question about it and yet they're battling just as hard as they were in the first minute. Bestie will try to throw again. He's got his receiver in the end zone Welly for the touchdown. Bruce Welly. And we'll get a chance to look at this one again. Bestie had a lot of time looked like he might have been able to run it in. But he spotted Welly open. And hit him. The defender was Mike Curran. But Welly beat him. They'll try for two. Bestie will try to throw. Through behind the, the football in Sox Center territory and uh, we'll try to pick up some of these uh, new black and gold uniforms in there for you right now. Number 25 is in there. Jeff O'Keefe at a running back position. And the quarterback is number 10. That's Marty Hansen in there for the Braves right now. Number 82 is Steve Kuski at one of the end spots. And we'll pick up more as we go along. Hansen with the give to Bruce Schulberg, and he is stacked up back at the 39 yard line as Schmitz and Chip Cox broke through to stop him. See if we can pick up some more now of these uh, new young numbers in there. Well, they've got one in there that always happens in a football game, one we don't have. Let's see, number 51. We don't have a listing for number 51. Invariably happens. But he's out there and centering the football anyway. Hansen is the quarterback. This is Jeff O'Keefe. Right down the far sideline. And here it is again, Ron. We he got some blocks. Joe, isn't it unusual the championship games in the nine man C, B, and now A have been runaways for the championship teams? We'll get a chance to look at that one in a little different angle. And he's uh, he just turned on the speed. I thought he got more blocking than that, but there was a hole there, and he just turned on the afterburners and pulled away from everybody. Jeff O'Keefe and they will try for two again and now we got Tim Branson in there at quarterback incomplete pass so the score will remain 46 to 19. Yeah there have been some scores in line as the tackle made there for Burnsville by Dave Mallory. Joe that nine man score was 64 to 12. <laughs> Nine man football uh, I've only seen really a couple of times in my life but it's a fascinating game. It's uh, got a lot of different aspects to it than 11 man football has. I've never seen it. I understand for the 11 man coach it's confusing as all get out. <laughs> Ron Bestie is the quarterback and he will have to throw over the middle incomplete. He was looking for Joe Brisson at the 35 yard line back defending on the play Bob Shandle. And back helping out on that one was Ryan Paris. Second down 10 at the 40. 
With just 52 seconds left in the ball game, Sox Center would like to get on the boards again. They have scored 19 points in this football game, and normally you might think that would be enough to win, but not when your opponent has put 46 up there. Persona split left this time. Bestie has played a fine game, drops Flag. back. Penalty marker down, the pass is intercepted at the 33 yard line. I believe it was Mike Curran. Burns the left side. Number 30, Curran. There was a penalty marker down there. For Sox Center now is Marty Sunderman. And the ball carrier that time. Sox Center coach is now giving his boys a chance to appear in the championship game, too. We've got a whole brand new set of white uniforms out there. We'll try to pick up these youngsters for you just as soon as we can. Sunderman is the quarterback. He gives to the trailing back on the play. Penalty marker down. He fell on top of it. Well, now we've got another new quarterback. Steve Wentzman, number five, is in for South Center. The clock shows five seconds left. There's a penalty marker down there talking to Burnsville. Illegal procedure would appear to be the indication. That'll do it. Declined. Second down, 10. Make it 11. Time for about one more play. Steve Wentzman is in now at quarterback for Sox Center. He's number five. Wentzman gives to Craig Engeldinger. And he gets down to the 40 as the clock runs out. And a happy gang of Burnsville Braves congratulate each other. We'll have an award ceremony coming up, but that's the end of the football game. The final score, Burnsville 46, Sox Center 19. the last play of the football game for you right there. The final score, Burnsville 46, Sox Center 19. Burnsville Victor 46, 46 to 19 over Sox Center. George Harris, three touchdowns. This must be the greatest moment for you. I'm sorry, just before we get it, here's the winning coach, Dick Hanson. Dick, this is a guy that I haven't seen a high school football player deliver a performance like this for some time. He hardly ever comes off the field, and almost everything he does is, is first rate. George, tell me, uh, first, before we talk about some of those touchdowns, you almost intercepted a pass on the goal line that turned into a Sox center touchdown. What happened to that? Well, I just, I was just standing back there, and he was, the quarterback was roaming around, and he just threw it, and I went to the ball, and it hit my hands, and I, the Sox center player hit me the same time and it bounced right out into the guy's hand. How about that long touchdown, the first long touchdown pass that broke it open for you? Um, that, uh, that was just, I ran an out and go and he just laid it in there and it was just really great. Oh, t tell me, Coach, they, had, they came down here at Sox Center with a reputation for being a very strong passing team. They did throw very well in the second half, but you shut them off in the first half. How'd you do it? Well, we had to blow a few linebackers in there to give the uh, give Bestie a little trouble and uh, try to disrupt his tempo a little bit. Uh, and, of course, our secondary has, has improved over the year. You don't build a secondary in a, in a couple of weeks, and the extended season gave them time to improve, and I really think the secondary did a better job of covering receivers than they have for, for quite a few nights. How were you able to get Orson open so many, uh, so many times from such long yardage right up the middle? Well, that's a counter that, uh, that we brought all the way from Grand Forks, North Dakota, I guess, with a fella that I worked with there for some years. Just a moment, we'll get a presentation. Here's your trophy, Coach. Why don't you take a look at it? It's a, a very exhilarating moment, as you can imagine. Uh, they were, I have rarely seen a team quite so well prepared as Burnsville was for this game. Sox Center had all kinds of offensive weapons. Burnsville took away a lot of them. They had a little weight advantage. And they also had, of course, one, a fellow who may be the best high school football player in Minnesota, 
and George Harris. We'll try to get the uh, coach Dick Hansen back here in just a moment. And of course, you want to stay tuned because we're going to see the really Class A championship football game here. Uh, Washburn against Moorhead, the number one ranked team against the number two ranked team. We'll be back with George Harris in just a moment. Hey, Jim, I don't know if you're going to get George or, or uh, Dick back, either one. So some outstanding play on the part of the Burnsville Braves as they emerge victorious in this football game, 46 to 19, and Ron uh, Raveling, uh, the coach from Columbia Heights, and of course the uh, president of the Minnesota High School Football Coaches Association. Uh, just a brief comment on the game. Okay, again, Dick Hansen, uh, the coach of the winning Burnsville. Why don't you introduce a gentleman standing next to you so proudly with that trophy? He's our headline coach, Vic Garrett. Okay, tell me, tell me what was the secret on your line today? They just came out and just blow them off the field. They just came off the ball just like we wanted to. Just control the neutral zone and we just blew them off the field. I, I, a lot of people, uh, of course, are going to credit George Harrison. He rightly deserves it. A great uh, pullback today, a running back uh, in Orson. But we thought that your quarterback did a remarkable job uh, with his ball handling, deception, and general conduct of the offense. We think Mark has uh, developed into a very, very fine quarterback, and, uh, and, and he is deceptive. He does do a nice job of hiding the football after he's uh, made the fade. 